An important part of knowing healing and wholeness is forgiveness and reconciliation. And so we come now to our prayers of confession. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Let us pray. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And can I invite you to join with me in the Collect Prayer for St Luke. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician, whose praise is in the Gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the Gospel, give your Church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now Marquetta is going to bring our first reading. Our first reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 to 5, Eden Restored. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them the light, and they will reign for ever and ever. Before we move on, I just want to say a bit about that reading. The end chapters of Revelation paint a wonderful picture of the end of time, when evil has finally been destroyed and God's kingdom is established in a new heaven and earth where everything is restored and made new. And as we've just heard, this new creation is pictured as a city with a garden at its centre. There's something in that, I think, about the human world and the natural world being reconciled, being together in harmony, um, very much as Helena was speaking to us about last week. Within the city is the river of life, and on either side of that is the tree of life, which makes me wonder whether we imagine maybe not just one tree, but a whole avenue of trees on both sides. And those trees bear fruit and leaves. Leaves, it says, for the healing of the nations. Healing is going to be a crucial part of being restored and brought into God's new creation. Healing from what? Well, from physical illness, yes. Elsewhere it says that there will be no more pain or suffering in heaven. That's a marvellous thought. But it's healing too in a much broader sense. 
this is the healing of the nation. So I imagine it's about healing from the scars of injustice and oppression, war and violence, cruelty and hatred. And I wonder too if the river of life and the tree of life with its fruits and leaves is a pointer to our continued dependence on God for nourishment and well-being. Even in this new creation, we need to draw on God's resources to sustain us. It may have come to your mind how Jesus spoke of himself as the living water. And the cross is often depicted in art and poetry as being, in some ways, um, allied to the tree of life, where we find healing and spiritual nourishment. Who knows? <laughs> this is all such rich imagery. Who can know what it would really be like to be in God's presence and perpetually in his presence? It's just mind-blowing. It's also inspiring. It's a picture that gives me hope for the future and that also motivates me to want to make that something of a reality now in our broken world. As Christians, we don't just say, oh, well, it's rubbish here on earth now, but it will be OK in the kingdom of God after death. We are called to be part of the new kingdom now in the way that we live our lives and the way that we shine as a little light in our own small corner. Again, we thought last week about how the little changes make a difference and how God's kingdom grows like the mustard seed. We pray for the big picture of the healing of the nations and we get on and play our own small part. So we're going to sing about that in our next hymn. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord. And, the verse ends, to a life of love in action, help us rise and pledge our word. And after that, Daniel is going to bring our gospel reading. <laughs> 